Hey everybody, welcome to Audio Movers with Andy, episode two. Today I'm gonna to show you how to download and install the Audio Movers plugin and set up a basic Audio Movers send in GarageBand. Now, I highly recommend GarageBand for students and folks just getting started with home recording. It's a free program available on all Macs and is quite user-friendly, so let's get started. To download the plugin, visit audiomovers.com. Click Get Free Download and select the appropriate operating system. In the top right hand corner, click Sign Up and enter your information to create an account. Audio Movers very kindly offers a one week free trial of the plugin, after which it is $3.99 per week, $9.99 per month, or $99 for the year. It's worth noting that multiple users can be logged in to the same account simultaneously, so teachers and students can use one shared subscription. Locate the file in the downloads folder of your computer and follow the installation steps to complete the process. After you do this, you will need to restart your computer. Before opening GarageBand, make sure that your interface, microphone, and headphones are all plugged in and powered on properly. Once you open GarageBand, you will be prompted to create a new project. Select Empty Project, and you will then be prompted to create a track. Select the microphone icon, and if you know what input your microphone is connected to, you can set that on the drop-down input menu. Also check the box for, I want to hear my instrument as I play. Now let's verify that our interface and microphone are connected properly and we are receiving a good signal. I can see the signal in my track volume when I talk, but I want to make sure I'm getting my external microphone audio, not my built-in computer microphone. On the menu at the top left of the screen, click GarageBand Preferences Audio MIDI. Here we can verify that the proper input device is selected. In my case, I want to make sure Ensemble is selected, but you should select your interface. Now you can exit this window. At the bottom of the screen is where we adjust the track settings. Since we only have one audio track in our session at this point, the track we want is automatically selected. Now we will expand the recording settings window so we can confirm that the proper input is selected. In my case, the microphone is coming in on channel five. If you are just using a single microphone, then your track should be mono. You know your track is mono if you see a small circle next to input in your recording settings. If you are using the built-in microphone on your computer or an external mic that happens to be stereo, then you want to have two circles symbolizing a stereo track. You can toggle between mono and stereo by clicking on the circle or circles. Check to make sure that your input level is at an appropriate level. In testing your microphone input level, you want to make sure your signal won't distort even at the loudest volume. So play a few loud notes If your signal is going in too far in the red, your input volume is likely too loud. Adjust your gain on your microphone preamp so your input level just barely peaks in the red on your loudest notes. If using the built-in computer microphone, you can adjust the input level using the record level fader under record settings. Next, we want to verify that input monitoring is enabled by selecting the little radio tower icon on the track or recording settings. It should be orange. This is a very important step to remember and perhaps the detail that folks most commonly overlook or get confused by. Input monitoring is what allows the signal to be sent to the plugin and therefore broadcast to the world. No input monitoring, no sound going out. If the person listening to your broadcast is getting no sound, the first thing I always recommend checking is that input monitoring is enabled. At this point, you should hear yourself back through your headphones and possibly with a slight echo, depending on how powerful of a computer you're using. If hearing yourself in the headphones is annoying at all and you prefer not to hear yourself, turn down the master volume at the top right-hand corner of the application, like so. 
Now let's expand the plugins window. This is a sort of virtual effects rack where we can place all sorts of plugins and effects. Select an empty space on the plugin rack and scroll down to audio units and navigate to audio movers, listen to. If audio movers is not showing up as an option, then you have not installed the plugin correctly and you should try reinstalling and restarting your computer. Once added, the Audio Movers plugin window will pop up on your screen. First, enter your username and password you set up at audiomovers.com and click Login. Next, rename your session whatever you wish. I'll call mine Andy Send. Now let's adjust the audio quality of our stream. I recommend starting with PCM 16-bit and adjusting up or down as needed. The order in which these options are organized is a bit counterintuitive. The highest quality option is PCM 32-bit, followed by 24-bit and 16-bit, which is CD quality. AAC is a slightly more compressed audio format, with 96 kilobytes per second being the lowest quality option. Depending on the quality of your internet connection, a higher or lower quality stream is recommended. However, for most users, the audible difference in quality between the different settings is going to be essentially indistinguishable, and in any case, far superior than Zoom audio. I recommend starting at a moderate setting of PCM 16-bit and only adjusting as needed. The latency setting affects how long your audio will take to travel to the listener. I find that a latency setting of 0.3 or higher is the most stable for home internet connections. But as with the quality level, I recommend experimenting with a setting to find out what works most reliably on your machine. Now we are logged in, settings dialed in, we are ready to start our transmission. Once we start the transmission, we should see the signal in the audio movers meter when we talk or play. If we are not seeing signal, Check to make sure monitoring is on. Check, 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 on. Check, 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 off, no signal. Check, 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 signal. Now we can copy the link and send to anyone we wish. Users who receive the link can simply open the link in their web browser and hear a live feed from our microphone. One important rule of thumb is that we should never open our own link, as this would result in an echo. For one-to-one -one connections with another person, they can follow these exact same steps. You send them your link, they send you their link, both open the link in their browser, and you can both hear each other. For more than two users, such as a group lesson or masterclass, all participants can follow the same steps and users can open any number of streaming links from the other participants they wish to hear. With multiple participants, juggling multiple links can get a bit confusing, so I recommend copying and pasting into a shared document for easy access. And remember, never open your own link in your own browser. I recommend using audio movers as a replacement for Zoom audio, which means that if you're on a Zoom call, you should send the link to the other participants and mute yourself on Zoom to avoid duplicate audio. Finally, we want to save our session. Name the file, whatever you wish, save, and quit GarageBand. Next time we open the application, all we should have to do is open our project under Recent Projects, log into the plugin, and press Start Transmission. As long as we don't change the name of our stream, the plugin link will not change. Now, I will quickly address a few common technical difficulties that you may encounter and their solutions. If no sound is being broadcast and or you are not seeing signal in your track or in the plugin meter, check to make sure your interface is properly connected and gain set at an appropriate level. Also, you want to confirm that input monitoring is enabled and the orange radio icon in the track is selected. If you are hearing an echo in your headphones, turn down the master volume in the top right hand corner of the screen. Confirm that you do not have your own streaming link open on your browser. Confirm that all parties are muted on Zoom audio. And make sure that any participants on the other side whom you are hearing back to the system are also wearing headphones. 
If other participants are not wearing headphones, then their microphone will pick up your signal from the speakers and broadcast it back to you with an annoying delay. If playing with headphones is frustrating, which I know it is for a lot of musicians, you can simply take them off while playing and put them back on when you want to hear the others speak. If listeners are getting crackling, static, or dropouts in the signal, it is likely that your internet cannot reliably handle the bandwidth of your quality and latency settings. Experiment with increasing the latency and decreasing the quality until the sound is stable. Remember that the lowest possible quality setting, and therefore the least bandwidth intensive, is AAC96, and luckily it still sounds incredibly clear. I hope this introduction has been useful. Please stay tuned for more demonstrations of advanced applications and routing possibilities. Thanks.